you're in line. And it's quiet on your lap. Good girl. Love you. You want mommy's head? There you go. Good life to it. No, no, no. I'm just trying to see how much more. Everyone has something to say. They may not have a voice to say it. They may not have the words to say it. But they absolutely have something to say. Just because, you know, they are displaying stereotypical behavior, that doesn't mean that they can not be taught communication in an appropriate manner. Because they can. It's all about just opening doors. How you ask? Over. Huh. Well, Somehow I had it in my mind that she wouldn't be able to navigate this world as well uh, because uh, she was nonverbal. But Eden has become the major part of who Valerie is. They have taken her and have enriched her life, and in doing so, it has enriched our lives. So they're using gestures, they're using verbalizations, along with a textbook or an augmentative device to make their wants and needs known. Okay, so this is a textbook, and then they would say, I want the toy. And then they would hand the sentence strip to the therapist. We then like to move to an augmentative device. And everything is identified according to category. So there's a toy page. Toys. Connor, do this. What are you doing? It's the closest thing he's had so far to a voice, so he actually can can choose things and tell us what he wants on that. Um, he abuses it for cookies, but... <laughs> when he came to Eden, it's... Oh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> I think he's distracted me a little bit. Here, what do you want? What do you want? Show me. What do you want? I want... Wafers. <laughs> you know, at least it's the beginning of something where we can actually understand what he's feeling. For the most part, he's very, very happy, but you can tell he's when he's not happy, a lot of times that has to do with him not being able to communicate and tell us what he wants or what he needs. Um, Connor. <laughs> Every time they drop their child off here, put them on a bus, or go visit them in one of our homes, they should hope that the next time they come back, Something's better. Where is Nicole brushing her teeth? Where? In the bathroom. Yay! Fantastic! You are so smart. They worked on um, exercises to strengthen her motor skills in her mouth. Hi! And um, she did start speaking. The first time I heard I love you, it's the happiest time of my life. Michelle, say so, I love you. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> they, they look at her as a whole person. It's not just her academics and her school day. It's what can she do outside of school. It's what can she do at home. It's what can she do recreationally. Are you ready? Yes. OK. Come on, let's do that. Why don't we go over here? Going over here? Yeah. Okay. The staff would push him. They said, you know, he can do this. We think, let's try this. And, and we were always amazed, and especially to see how he succeeded in everything they tried with him. Can you make me one copy? It's absolutely critical to make sure that he's in a program that is going to leverage his talents and skills, but still give him an opportunity to grow as an individual, because that's really the next frontier for autism in general is the adult services program and finding gainful employment, um, you know, letting them earn a, you know, a decent livable wage, if you will, and, you know, the respect of the community and integration in the community. You know, just him being involved uh, in, in work that really is fulfilling for him. Autism has evolved over the years, um, and I think we're moving into an area where we can think more positively. What are you going to have when we get it done? You want eggs or you want pancakes or both? Bacon. Pancakes. Then you're going to have sausage or bacon? Bacon. Bacon. 
and uh, Sprite or orange juice? Orange juice. Orange juice. Okay, then say we're we're good. He's thinking it through, mm -hmm. but you have to prompt him. You always get the sense that his brain is working all the time. He could outsmart us any day. And does. And does. He's happy in the morning to get up and get dressed. He comes in fairly enthusiastic in the evening. If he's made one of his little art projects, he's just ecstatic. I mean, how will paint with the children? There you go. The ones he's not so crazy about, he'll stick in the corner, but the ones he really likes, he places them. You know, a lot of it's just expecting a lot of him, um, or at least that, you know, that he will mature to the, to the highest, you know, level he can. So many things that I thought were impossible became possible because of it. <laughs> Wow, that's a big one. Thank you. Wow. Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> we need to embrace what is possible. People with autism deserve the same that everyone else has in terms of opportunities to live a full and rewarding life, a rich life. And Eden wants to be able to give that to these individuals and to their families. And I think we have to look at each person individually, figure out what is the next step for them, and, and to try to get them on an even better trajectory. Um, because it's all about progress, it's all about outcomes, it's all about helping them be all that they can be.